you know, I feel in the center of the world in this moment because I'm a place which is magnetic. It's a place where not only beauty, as before we heard, is concentrated, but also the attention of person who have built um, things in their life, enterprises, connections, associations, and mostly are looking in a positive way to this extremely complex moment we are all living. So having said that everybody knows that from tomorrow morning we are back to the things we have to do, it's still the moment now where to look at forward thinking opportunities which can give us uh, to things we do every day another vision. And for this reason, I decided to bring you in something which looks ordinary for most of us. Everybody has clothes, everybody is dressing, everybody thought once what to dress when, but at the end we never considered uh, most of us textile and fashion industry as a, a relevant industry in the global, in the planet. There is just a small problem because the UN said a few years ago that we are the second most polluting industry in the world. So it's not because we produce simply, but because we do it not in the wrong way, in the right way. So let me go a little bit through this journey because it might start uh, from textile and fashion but I'm sure, and it's also the vision of those who are investing in that, it will integrate other industries. Today we heard about tourism, but it's also integrated in furniture, design, cosmetic, jewelry. So all the lifestyle industries in which most of us are connected and need the tech services which you have presented before. So um, maybe you recognize it. It's a Tiziano, 16th century. And the two here we know, Adam and Eva. So just to clarify, Eva has selected everything, the color of the apple, the color of the tree, the color of the leaves. She was already the one leading in the situation. But what changed in fashion, I used to say, from that very early stage of our lives until 2018? Somebody can tell me the new shapes, the new fabrics, somebody invention of a new, of a new part. Sincerely, from an industrial point of view, nothing so special. And let me explain you what is my angle of vision. Textile and fashion industry needs uh, all kinds of evolution which are already existing in other industries, in chemical, in mechanical, in software engineering, in digital, so they have just absorbed it. But whenever has been textile and fashion a game changer industry? Just now. Because thanks to the European community, with a directive uh, called 851 of the year 2018, the European community sees textile and fashion as the first lifestyle industry in which to change from a linear to a circular economy. But as we have said before, it's the second most polluting in the world. Maybe it makes sense to enter a little bit more this topic. And why should we look at that? Because changing the business model, it's complex. It's, you need years, you need innovation, and you need people who trust in this new vision. But most of all, you need an ecosystem. So I'm very thankful to the European community, which has understood that in order to be competitive, but also to be alive and also to protect the earth, you need to change the industries we love more in order not only to be beautiful from an aesthetic part, but to be beautiful indeed. So just give a few information, because I think most uh, are known, but maybe not. Since 1996, when a little bit we can say was a starting point of a sort kind of fast fashion, the prices up today have medium average lowered 30% than uh, if we calculate it from that time. But we all in this room consume every year 40% more. And how much does do our clothes last? the half it's calculated. So it's growth numbers just to show how much more we consume for something, something which has a lower quality, but most of all, we don't know what to do with what we give away after that we have done it. 
When you produce a t-shirt, you need 2,700 liters from when you start from the cotton until we get. Do you know how many liters you need when you do a jeans? You're beautiful white. White is even mm, more complex than uh, indigo. Between uh, 12 and 13,000 liters from the starting point. So we are an extremely water consumption industry. What about our oceans? So the micropolitation, so everything which goes every time we wash our things at home. We think that the biggest pollution comes from the industry. All oh, that industry, that grey places where it's everything done in not... No, no, every time we wash, 60 degrees, 90 degrees at home. You know, there was at a certain time in Europe the policy to, to wash 30 degrees. And it's not only a matter how much costs energy today. It's also how you much you want your clothes last and how you treat them. But at the very end, also how much you will pollute. So it's not only how you do your housekeeping. It's also how I conceive the new fabrics to be done. So maybe the new polyester has to be different than the polyester which has been done 10 years ago. And what about, which, which I think is the most impressive information, what about uh, the CO2? So we have 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. This is more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. Just to tell you that this information comes from the website europa.eu, from the European Parliament. So it's always important to double check where comes the information from, because absolutely we can say a lot of things, but then we need to get through. So this is just a synthesis. So having, oh please, my dear. That's why, oh, you, you know, <laughs> no, no, you know what, I, I, with I, have, Michael, I, I have prepared for you the same dress of Adam for later, <laughs> I don't know if you like the color I have selected for you, but <laughs> obviously I'll be Eva, so So, I'm happy that all these things let, let us think and laugh together because things very relevant happened. Hello. I have to say that the biggest event in which people died in the world is not uh, for uh, uh, the tsunami or for the Second World War. It, it was because in 2013 the Rana Plaza collapsed. It's a building in Bangladesh where there were more than 1,000 people. 100 people who died just in one minute, just because they were inside making t-shirts. And there were all kinds of companies, I don't want to make names because after they found the labels, but why? Because you give me the business, I give it to him, he gives it to her, and then there is no social responsibility. But that was a starting moment from a social aspect. Sustainability is not only social aspect, it's obviously a complex world where the definition is uh, still fluid. So let's look at the other part. In 2015, SMI, Sistema Moda Italia, which is the Italian Textile Association, has created the first sustainability um, committee. Why is it important? Because we don't have as brands to talk of sustainability. We have to talk it from a production point of view, from what we call the man monte, monte della filiera, of the supply chain. So when fiber, yarn, fabric, manufacturers, uh, finishers start talking about sustainability, then things concretely happen. So having said that, it's a good point. The 2018 regulation. This regulation made two things which are revolutionary. The first one, we will have by 2025 each European country to have EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility, which already we have in packaging and other stuff like uh, electronic devices and so on. The money which will be collected through this tax will be needed for each country to create a circular vision in sustainability and therefore to make it, it's not only a matter of law, it's to have the tools. Going on, there have been several other topics done and by 2025, which is a, you can see it in two days, but they, did, they started working on that in 2018. And <coughs> although this topic might be to most of the consumer unknown, from an industrial perspective, Companies are strongly working. Again, I don't want to make any, any names of fashion brands, but trust me, they really have R&D uh, parts of their companies working on how to implement this at the best way. And most of all, Eurotex, 
which is the association of all the textile associations in Europe, talking directly to the European Commission, is dealing it from a more concrete perspective. So here we are. Let's give a, a clear sentence which was written in the document made the 30 March 2022 by the European Community. The time of fast fashion is finished. The 20, the 20 years where we made through a linear economy just destroying products will not be supported no more. So it's legal, thanks for existing, but everybody of us from them to the luxury has to invest in a circular vision. So just to give you two points, in the last uh, uh, two years came out regulation extremely uh, um, wide about eco-design, digital passport, greenwashing actions. So I just can't say I'm sustainable. No, maybe we need to measure it. We need to say things which have a point. Stopping incineration. You know that textile waste pre and post consumer has been mainly, mainly incinerated before these laws. Microplastic pollution reduction reducing export of textile waste. So not to send it, as we spoke yesterday, for instance, to Africa or whatever country, I mean, can be. Circular opportunities for repairing. So today repairing is cool, let me say this. Recycling and upcycling. But if you has this strategy, who's going to implement it? That's the angle where we had an idea. So uh, just to say a small thing, up to now, from uh, when we said before the new regulations, they come, uh, they started, uh, you know, the first picture of Adam and Eva, the one he likes the most. Uh, we started from spinning, waving, finishing, dyeing, printing, manufacturing, then we have the brand, the retail, and then we have the end of waste, the post-consumer. We also have a topic about the pre-consumer. All innovation has to be done on recycling and recovery. Let me give you two topics. Uh, parts of oranges, uh, which you use in the uh, food industry, can be used for making new fibers, orange fiber. And the lady we heard this morning were with her great creative company. So it's already 10 years existing in Italy, this company, and producing at an international scale. Ferragamo made a whole collection with uh, uh, the fibers coming from uh, waste of oranges. Depop, which we see there, is a startup which was founded in Italy and it's uh, the second Italian unicorn. It's about, it's a competitor of Vestiaire Collectif. So maybe I'm not talking about uh, things which are small and just to be done at home. It looks a little bit, but there are other very interesting startups. So let me just tell you something about myself. I'm an entrepreneur in fashion. I work since I'm so tall with my family and I'm proud of that. We are distributor of international fashion brands. We select them worldwide and we sell it to luxury stores in Italy, in Europe, in Middle East, in the Russian area. It's a business I do it with my heart. I can't stop thinking to products, uh, stores, uh, strategies constantly. By the way, I have selected amazing Greek uh, designers since I come here for holidays, but that's a topic I'll talk to you later. So, who I am? I'm. Uh, I, I have a family business which is on, on distribution. I invested a lot of my time in the Italian uh, Industrial Association, Confindustria, which I suggest you to have a look because it's the leading network in Italy if you want to enter different industries. And uh, I'm proud to say I was the first woman president for four and a half years of the textile association under 40 years. And uh, I started after to develop... <laughs> And uh, when I ended my uh, great adventure as president of the association while working in my family business, I thought inno innovation needs to step strongly inside the, the, this system. And I wanted to do it not only because I knew the brands, but because I knew the production from the very beginning. We, I organized uh, 12 national conventions about textile in the four years. So. I met Nazareno Mengoni and he introduced me to a world of innovation. It's Startup Bootcamp. So the Bootcamp is, uh, was founded uh, 15 years ago in Holland. They create incubators worldwide dedicated to, in to innovation in any industry. Energy, IoT, smart food, smart health, insure tech, energy, sport and wellness tech. These are just some of the incubators they have created in 20 years. 
Nazareno told me his dream. He told me, you know, Alessandra, I want to found the, the fashion tech incubator in Italy. Let's work on it together. So he started his adventure and I helped him very pleased because I, I trusted a lot in all this operation. What happened in the last three years? We started from a white paper, knowing that until now, no, none of the Italian fashion brands had ever cooperated on innovation, never on specifically on sustainability, and never cooperating with the producers on the end. So it looked a little bit hard. Startup Bootcamp, as I said, is acting in all this part, and we launched uh, the Fashion Tech Incubator in Milano. Uh, you know, we have in Italy the full supply chain, because in Italy you can, from the yarn to the catwalk, make it in one country. It's a place where it is still possible. You know that we have some companies who exist since more than 250 years producing f fabrics uh, and com manufacturing. It's amazing, the heritage, we, it's, in my, it's uh, in my country. We started thinking how to do that, and it happened that uh, we got 26 partners. So, <laughs> the first one investing was Stone Island, then arrived uh, Lorenzo Bertelli, the CEO of Prada Group, uh, second generation, Valentino, Armani, later on came Moschino and Prada. This is uh, Moschino and Marseille coming from the brands. Then here we have all the companies who are the fabric producer. So they collected together, joined the forces and participated to the program. Here we have Marzotto Group. Uh, we have companies like Vitale Barberis Canonico existing since uh, the year 1663, just to say, and uh, Reda. And then we had some technology. What did all these people together? They sat at the table and they said, dear Startup Bootcamp, can you help us to find solution to three main pillars? And if you're good to do it, we will do it in the future more and more with you. So, in fact, in three years, these are the summary notes. In three years, we met, uh, we got application for more than 3,000 startups worldwide. We had direct meeting and I, most of them, 90% followed them with more than 500 startups. Then we got final pitches and we incubated 35. So these are the numbers of a funnel dedicated to different topics. So somebody told me at the very beginning, I don't understand what is innovation in fashion. It should be to select a new color for the next season. <laughs> okay, got it. That's what I do in my family business daily. We look at the new color, the new shape, the new trend, the new marketing, but maybe here we're on another stage. So the first pillar is Industry 4.0. We selected in wearables, 3D smart materials, all kind of supply chain evolution, which is very complex because all the machineries behind the production is not just a classic sewing machine, it's uh, more uh, other topics, and uh, having a global innovative vision on this was totally game-changing. The second was sustainability as a business. So looking at uh, sustainable in um, innovations for the textile world and fashion world, but not only, uh, which wouldn't have been uh, use useful a few years ago. So as we all know, pre-loved digital businesses, fashion rental, recycling and upcycling. Do you know how many patents have been done in the last five years about technologies for recycling? Until 2016, uh, when all these things started a little bit in the clouds and then with the direct with the law from the European Community 2018, only 1% of the any textile waste uh, produced in Europe was recycled. So there was a huge market of doing things. The rest was all incinerated, just to get back to the problem before. Then uh, material revolutions and corporate social responsibility. Omnichannel at a scale. At this stage, I heard a lot of tech innovation. Any of the tech innovation I heard could, be, could match to the necessities of this industry. So we did not con put them uh, back away. So it's all about gaming, influencer marketing, uh, companies, uh, and dealing with mobile payments, uh, and retail innovation. We talked about how to figure out the, uh, the digital passport, uh, still waiting for the definitive law, how it has to be done in order to do it in the proper way in the European market. 
So this is the cohort of the startups that we have upscaled. Um, some started the first year in 2019, three-year program. Some others are just of 2022, the last year. Uh, some made extraordinary export. Let, as you can see from the flags, we selected international startups, so we are proud to bring to uh, an Italian headquarter international good minds. And uh, we selected also some Italians, but it was not the priority at this first program. And uh, we did them. You can say that there are more on our channel, less on operative. Let me tell you that those on the operational one are really strong, innovative, and it's more difficult to get new ones there than maybe here. So, okay, it's a matter of knowing the topic and entering the different details. Uh, what we have done, we have created these three different areas of research, omnichannel, sustainability, and industry 5.0. We did it for three years, as you can see, and we selected at the end startups from very different countries. And what it happened? It happened that what we was founded three years ago, today has a 3.5 million euro evaluation. And inside these startups have developed. We of course call a lot of mentors worldwide to speak to the, to the 10 startups which every year we select. So the funnel is huge. Every application we got approximately 1,000 startups. We select to 500, we talk to them, we get to 50, and then we incubate only 10. But the very good thing is that the companies you have seen before who have invested in the program have the possibility to speak with the last 200 anytime they want. And so many businesses happening about them. And that's the point. It's not only the last ones important. It's the whole system of cooperation. So just once, uh, very interesting, Obsess. It's $60 million evaluation. We've selected her in 2019. It's virtual shrooming. It looked to be something uh, interesting, well done, uh, but why should I use it? COVID arrived. That's the answer. Uh, Atelier Reforma, this is on the industrial side. It's an Italian from, uh, it's a company from Torino. It's two ladies, so we're very proud to have a lot of uh, female founders. They do sorting. So every time, the dresses you're wearing in I don't know how many years you will throw them away and I hope that you will not throw it in the black dustbin but in the place which is for the textile waste. Maybe you think it will be donated. Maybe yes. Maybe it will be recycled. But to deselect this there is some people who take this waste and sort it. And until today it's mainly done by hand. Of course, there are a lot of new techniques of waste uh, sorting, but these girls put together the um, most edgy techniques worldwide in sorting of uh, um, clothing in order to make it the best way, because if you do a good sorting, then you can do a good recycling, and then all this economy is blooming out. So the first three years started with a white paper and finished with what you saw. So it's time to look at the new program. That's what I wanted to tell you. And I'm proud to say that in the new program also trusted the Italian government with Casa Depositi e Prestiti, which is part of the Minister of Treasure. And uh, we have the chance to make it double. So our headquarters is in Milano, but the second one will be in Florence. But again, we are here for talking to international startups, international investors. Why? Because in the first three years, we concentrate a lot only on the textile fashion partners. The next three years will be concentrated on the leading topic, sustainability. And sustainability is interesting for other industries. We said furniture, cosmetic, tourism, jewelry, anything connect or anything anybody who is interested to this topic as a strategical position for himself. So having seen this, we, have, we are going to launch the 22-26 three-year program. We are now putting all the companies together to do it uh, between, uh, as I said, Milano and uh, Florence. And uh, we have created uh, all what is the finance part about that. So there will be a new company with a new name which will incorporate the Italian, the, sorry, the Milano headquarter, which will be dedicated to international startups, and the Florence headquarter, who will be dedicated to, to the international startups who want, after the program, to stay in Italy. You are very welcome. And in this second program, we are very pleased to have 
leading partners, so Casa Depositi e Prestiti, as I said, which is like a royal stamp for us, uh, Jellyfy, which is connected, and we will also cooperate with Polymoda, which is one of the leading uh, schools for, fa for fashion and design, but again, having said, working on different things. So, it's a lot of things happen. COVID did not stop us at all. COVID showed to all the people of textile and fashion that uh, it was necessary to look at innovation because the beauty can't be stopped by external topics but needs still to work out. I'm happy to say that uh, the policy of the European community to have a vision in, of circular economies in lifestyle industries is of course a leading ecosystem, but as you have seen, one third of our startups are American. So we are not uh, putting edges at any topic. Innovation is anyway global. So this is a little bit what happened. Just uh, one thing to see. Uh, where is my, oh, my black man, no, please. <laughs> Just one minute of the opening. Uh, can we put it from beginning with music? Of the opening of the demo day session of 2022. Um, do we have maybe the... Time flies. If you only think about how we started three years ago, yeah and how fashion tech has accelerated in such a short time. And not only technology, but also companies, people, and the society we are living in. Few things never change, ethics, values, but the technology to build our future companies does rapidly. This year, we want to show even more the vigilant eye startup bootcamp has regarding technological solutions from our startup batch. It's a fashion renaissance, a change for good. And from 2019 until today, how has the world changed? We all woke up in a new reality where digital transformation and sustainability are a necessity and no longer just a luxury. These topics have been on the tables of fashion leaders for years, but now, in a matter of months, innovation within the industry has accelerated along the entire value chain. We saw a 200% increase in online sales during April and May 2020, and the share of fashion sales done online nearly doubled from 16% to 29% globally. But we don't consume the same way. 90% of customers are willing to pay more to an ethical retailer or brand that gives back to society. And one in three customers care more about wearing sustainable apparel than before the pandemic. And now how have we been responding to these changes? From 2019 until today, we've pushed that the topics of sustainability and digital transformation would be a reality. We have traveled physically and virtually around the world, mapped and analyzed over 3,000 startups from over 30 countries. We met and assessed over 500 of them in one-on-one -on -one sessions to select and invest in the best 35 teams. We have supported the growth of these 35 teams with intense acceleration programs lasting 13 weeks, in which we ran over 100 workshops and 50 masterclasses. Now it's time to see the growth of the 13 startups of this year's cohort. Are you ready to be a part of a new reality? Let's go! Welcome to our Renaissance Demo Day. Fantastic. I ask and get back to my presentation. Uh, can we do it? Thank you, because he, he created everything. So, um, what did I want to tell you today? I want to tell you that uh, next time you open your wardrobe and you select what you wear, you're making a choice in your life. Not because you have to wear recycled or organic fabrics. No, not at all. First of all, take care of the things you have, how you wash them, repair goods, and trust in those who bring innovation to textile and fashion. And I hope you have noticed, I always say textile and fashion, because the tomato is not only the brand, it's all the production supply chain before because uh, so many humans worldwide are connected that uh, we don't have to be on top of the scale as a polluting most industry, but because we serve part of the good sentiments we have every day. 
wearing something is personality. We discovered it during COVID when we had to wear pyjama for 20 months. So now we are very pleased to even have uh, these uncommon heels, but it's, it's part of ourself. It's part of our being social animals. So this program goes on for the next three years. Whoever of you is interested to have a look at it, not because he's dealing in textile fashion, but because he thinks that sustainability is a topic which will connect his businesses or his interests to the, to the next stage, please, I'm really willing to put you in contact together with this amazing ecosystem. And the very last point. I have, uh, um, oh sorry, let me. Uh, there is one startup in my heart and it's, it's not digital, it's practical, it's physical, and I'm proud to bring on stage something which comes from a physical point and not only from digital aspect. Uh, it's upcycling. Every time you will give away what you wear, you have two solutions. I mean, not the third one to be incinerated, no more, hopefully, but two ones, either to be recycled or to be upcycled. And to do upcycling, you need the mindness, you need the craftsmanship, you need the love which was in textile and fashion maybe 50, 40 years ago when everybody knew exactly how to do that stuff and not only to produce it in series, 1,000 pieces, the same as everybody. So we say that waste is our canvas, refashion is art. Masthead is an Italian startup which starts from the Italian knowledge but is open to all. They do two kinds of things, these guys. They do, on one side, on, if you go on masthead.com website, you can buy amazing stuff which is all made of upcycled. Everybody has noticed this necklace, which is made of pieces of Coca-Cola just uh, dyed uh, and then with crochet, well, the made. Or we do waste supplying. Do you know how many companies, shops, uh, fabric producers have uh, waste pieces made uh, just to throw away and they don't know to who to give it in the proper way, it's a full connecting platform now. And it's the second part. We are actually in touch with uh, Armani Group, Bottega Veneta, Uniqlo, who gave us an amazing project actually for whole Europe for their shops. The other two, it's ongoing, but I mean, it's not a matter of small things to be done at home. It's a matter to talk to any level. So for me, this is the new luxury consciousness. This is what happens. You have an old cashmere, you can dye it, you have things, you can redo re re it. Have a look, play with it, let me know if it makes sense. And just to tell you that our main consumers actually are Americans and Japanese because they love to have things with this inspiration. Thanks a lot. Thank